Whether you're a credit card connoisseur or you're somebody that's new to this whole game, you likely know about the Amazon Prime credit card. To many, this credit card is a no-brainer to add to your setup, but at the same time, it might not be for you. So before y'all ask too many questions about why I have this credit card, considering I've really never talked about it on my channel, just know that this is actually my mom's new credit card that she applied for recently. But in explaining my rationale in getting her to apply for this credit card, I hope you'll be able to decide whether or not this card is actually worth it for you and your situation personally. And the way this video is going be broken down is in three main parts. In part one, I'll be discussing the three main reasons I think a lot of people should consider adding this card to their setup. In part two, I'll be explaining my mom's data points before and after applying for this credit card so you can, you know, get an idea of whether or not you would get approved if you were to apply for it. And then in part three, I'm going to be unboxing this credit card live. So is this credit card going to be worth it for you? Let me tell you more about it so we can find out together. In my eyes, this card has a super simple value add to your life if you are the right target audience for this card. So the first reason that I think most people should consider applying for it is because it has no annual fee with an Amazon Prime subscription. So you might have heard some people talk about how this card does technically have an annual fee because you have to pay for Amazon Prime to get it. But at the same time, I feel like most people out there have Amazon Prime these days. And if you don't have Amazon Prime, then why would you really want this card to begin with? There is a little hack about the Amazon Prime membership that I wanted to mention here because it's something that I've personally implemented. And that's going to be the Amazon household feature. So what that is, at least roughly broken down, is that as an Amazon Prime account, holder, you're able to add people to your household that can actually apply for these credit cards as if they have Prime themselves. So that applies for the personal Amazon Prime card we're talking about here today. And it also applies to the Amex Amazon Business Prime card that of course, American Express offers. That is the card that I actually personally have, and I have it through my Amazon Prime account, but that Amazon Prime account is actually my mom's account that I'm a household member of. So technically, you're even able to at least double dip on these cards if you wanted to, assuming you do have somebody in your family that you could add as a household member, and they could get the cards as well. So while that may not be extremely useful to everybody, I do think it's really important to know because I wouldn't want you going out to get Amazon Prime yourself if somebody in your family already has Prime and could just add you as a household member. Another thing to remember about this first reason as to why this card is so popular is that if you ever did cancel your Amazon Prime, you could just downgrade this card to the Amazon store card with no annual fee to keep it alive if you wanted to. Of course, that's assuming you don't actually just want to cancel it outright. But as y'all know, I always will try to at least downgrade to a no annual fee card first if I can help it. That way I can keep that account alive and aging with my credit report. Reason number two as to why I think most people should consider this credit card is because it comes with an Amazon gift card as part of the welcome offer. At the time of me recording this, the Amazon gift card is only for $100, but there is no minimum spending requirement in order to get that gift card deposited to your account. It's also instantly deposited to your account, which means that literally right after you apply, you're able to use that gift card. This is something I personally did with the Amex Amazon Prime business card once again, because back then Daniel Braun was coming to visit me for the Creator Conversations episode we filmed together, and I did not have a studio light yet, so I decided to go ahead and use that gift card for the studio light in time for him to get there and us film that Creator Conversations. I have heard of a couple of subscribers saying that they had a bit of an issue you getting the Amazon gift card deposited, but I've now been a part of the application process for both of the Amazon Prime cards and they were instantly deposited. So hopefully you don't run into that issue, but if you do, of course, leave your data points down below. I do want to note that sometimes the welcome offer on this card will rise substantially, sometimes to even, you know, say $200 for this gift card. And that's generally true throughout the holidays as well as on Prime Day. And that is exactly when I got my mom to apply. It was during Prime Day one or two months ago or something like that. And I think this gift card is especially helpful too during the holiday season, which is when I'm recording this video. I do realize that it's going to post after Christmas, but still, you know, it never hurts to have an Amazon gift card considering how much we all use those. So basically, if you do see that elevated offer out there, I would recommend trying to get it while it's hot. While we're on the topic of welcome offers, I feel like now would be a great time for me to take the time to tell y'all about the app that I use to track all of my bonuses, that of course being Max Rewards. Max Rewards is an all-in-one credit card management app that I've personally been using since the very beginning of my credit card journey, hence why they're a sponsor of the channel. With their latest update though, at least at the time of me recording, they've added in multiple different bonus trackers that you can add to your credit cards that I want to show you here today. So now in their activities tab, you can click on trackers on the top of the screen. And then when you click add to add a tracker, you're going to see the three different types of trackers you can now add to your credit cards. So those three in particular are sign up bonus trackers, which of course is great to track your sign up bonuses, a retention bonus tracker in case you're not spending towards a sign up bonus, but a retention bonus instead, as well as a new transaction bonus tracker. And this one is of course for a card, maybe like the built MasterCard, where you need to make five transactions in a billing period in order to get your points, this could help you with that type of thing. So to show you all what it actually looks like once you click into one of these, I'm going to go ahead and click on sign up bonus tracker. And now it's going to let me select from one of my credit cards. We'll just go with the Chase 
Freedom Unlimited since that's the top one here. And now you can see that I can input the total amount of bonus points I will get for the sign up bonus, as well as the minimum spend required to hit that bonus. And then if I input the date that I was approved and the duration of the actual welcome bonus period, then it'll automatically track all of my transactions starting at that date. Of course, as long as the cards are syncing to the app. If you're somebody that wants to try out this feature, as well as a lot of the other free features with the app, please be sure to download it through the link in my description. And during the sign up process, you can enter the promo code Spencer to get you a one month discount on the one year Max Rewards Gold subscription. Thank you to Max Rewards for sponsoring this video, but let's get back to talking about the power of the Amazon Prime Visa credit card. Now, reason number three is going to be one that you probably have this card for or have considered applying for it for, and that is the fact that it gives you 5% back on all of your Amazon purchases. You may hear others in this space, including my buddy Luke's Points and Miles, saying that they will take 5% cash back all day over a 2x transferable currency credit card, and I'm also in that same boat. 5% cash back on Amazon purchases is something that's going to be really hard to beat out there unless your rotating quarterly category cards like your Chase Freedom Flex, for example, do have Amazon as one of the 5x categories. When those months come up, I would probably switch all of my Amazon spend to that card, especially with Chase, because 5x Chase points is worth a lot more than 5x cash back if you do use those points correctly. But for the majority of the year, you're not going to be getting 5% back on Amazon purchases with a card like the Chase Freedom Flex, hence why a card like the Amazon Prime Visa is so essential for a lot of our setups. On top of the 5% it gives you on just Amazon.com, it's also going to give you 5% back at Amazon Fresh, Whole Foods, and Chase Travel. But of course, I would use your Chase credit cards to give you 5x back on Chase Travel instead of this one because, again, we want to take Chase points over cash back where we can. But on top of that, it's going to give you 2% back on gas stations, restaurants, and local transit and commuting. Plus, of course, 1% percent back on everything else. Of course, most people getting this credit card only care to get it for the 5% back on amazon.com, which is exactly what I would use the card for. And the cool thing about that is that you never really actually need the physical card on you. I think I've heard Ben Hedges mention it before how he's like basically completely lost his card in one of his sock drawers, but he never actually needs to go get it because once it's loaded into your Amazon account, you can just use it right there. It also is automatically loaded to your Amazon account and set as the default payment method whenever you go to apply for it, at least whenever I applied for it with my mom. So that's just more reason to not really need to carry the physical card with you unless you want that 5% back on stuff like Whole Foods. And while those 2x categories are pretty good on this card, at the same time, you probably do have some kind of transferable currency credit card or just a 2% cashback credit card that covers all of those categories anyways. So again, for most people, 5% back on Amazon purchases is the bread and butter of this card. While we're talking about the earning categories, of course, we need to talk about how these points can be redeemed at the same time. And as you may expect, in general, this card is going to give you 5% cashback on Amazon so you can just use your Amazon points earned on this card to then give you a pseudo discount on all of your purchases because you can pay with points for part of your purchases. That's all handled through Amazon.com. It's not a statement credit, but it's more of something you just apply at checkout whenever you're checking out on Amazon. But at the same time, I did want to mention that you can technically use your points for cashback through Chase, and you can also redeem your points for gift cards or travel through Chase as well. But there are restrictions to that, like minimum amounts of points you need to redeem. And I would also just recommend that you use your Chase points for all of your Chase redemption and you use your Amazon card for Amazon redemptions. At least that's just what makes sense to me, but maybe you want to use them differently and you do have some other options there. Just make sure that they're going to give you at least one cent per point whenever you go to redeem, because if not, then you're much better using your points straight through Amazon, which is how they're intended to be used. Sorry, I have to jump in here real quick, y'all. While this video is being edited, I got a comment from a friend of the channel, Travel Boss Nas, who actually brought up a really good point and one that I want to mention in this video. With the ability to cash out your Amazon points through Chase at a one cent per point valuation, that is technically the best way to go about this if you want to maximize your value. Because whenever you use your Amazon points through Amazon directly to give you a discount, you're then lowering the amount of 5% cash back you get on that purchase. So if instead you always cash out your points through Chase instead, technically you're going to be getting marginally more value from your actual 5% back on all of your Amazon purchases than if you were to just cash out the points through Amazon directly. You do have to keep in mind the minimum redemption values when doing that through Chase, which I think is $25 or 2,500 points, but definitely something good to note in case y'all are trying to squeeze every bit of value you can from this card. Okay, let's get back to it. Now that we've covered the three main reasons I think this card is deserving to be as popular as it is, let's do a quick recap. Reason number one is that this card has no annual fee with an Amazon Prime membership. Reason number two is that you get an Amazon gift card instantly deposited to your Amazon account with no spending requirement right after you apply. And reason number three, you get 5% back on all of your Amazon purchases without having to think about it. Now let's get into part two, my mom's data points before and after applying for this card. So at this point in my mom's credit card journey, she has 20 plus years of experience with credit cards. And, you know, that makes her have a pretty high credit score because of that length of credit history. So she was in the 800s when 
applying for this card. Do you need to be in the 800s? Absolutely not, but just letting you know exactly what she got approved with so you have an idea. She was also under Chase's 524 rule, and the last credit card she had applied for was the Chase Sapphire Preferred a few months back. Another recommendation of mine, of course. And before that, I don't think she had gotten a card for at least a year or two, so you can see she has a very low velocity these days. And while she was under Chase 524, again, that does not necessarily mean you need to be. Technically, by the book, you do need to be under Chase 524 in order to get approved for this card, but this is one of those cards that every single day I get somebody commenting about saying that they got approved while over 524, even as high as like 10 or 1224 sometimes. So while your odds are likely higher while under 524, you don't necessarily need to let it dictate you on this specific Chase credit card in particular. So after she applied for the card, the only thing that she got on her credit report was a hard pool. I didn't actually look at her credit reports, but I know that for me, Chase always pulls Experian where we live. But the nice thing about this card is that you are actually able to check if you're pre-approved for it. We went through that process and it said she wasn't pre-approved for some reason, but I was like, yeah, I don't think that's accurate. I feel like you're going to get approved for this card. So we went through with the application process and obviously she was approved just fine. So while the pre-approval tool is nice and I do recommend that you use it again, it may not be something to solely rely on here because that information wasn't accurate to us whenever she applied for it. Now that we know the reasons why I got my mom to apply for this card, as well as her data points before and after applying, let's move into part three, which is the live unboxing of this credit card. Alrighty, now that I got the camera turned around, we can go ahead and dive into the unboxing of this credit card itself. As you can tell, as always, had to black out all of our personal information, and especially because it's my mom's, I had to really black out as much as possible. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. Honestly, there is quite a bit of papers that come with this credit card in particular, which is more than I'm used to, to be honest. And of course, this is the page that everybody cares about, but we're going to wait until the end to do that so we can just see what else is in here. And the first page besides the actual card itself is going to be the card member agreement, rates and fees table specifically. So of course, a lot of these numbers are important to at least know, but for something like the annual percentage rate, this is something that I always say that I don't care about, as y'all know, because we're always going to be paying off our cards on time and in full. But as for fees, these of course are a little bit more important, especially the annual membership fee, which of course there is none of on this card since you can only get approved with a prime membership. They do have balance transfer, cash advance fees, but no foreign transaction fees, which actually is a good plus of this credit card. Then we also have late payment and return payment fees, both up to $39. But again, if we're paying on time and in full, these don't matter. Let's go ahead and get this one out of here. Next up, we have a program guide to this credit card. Meet your new Prime Visa, it says. And in here, it's going to tell us all about all the unlimited rewards we can earn, like the 5% at Amazon and Whole Foods and all of that, as well as how you can redeem your rewards, which I also already covered. But as you can see down here, there is that increment I was talking about. You have to redeem in 25 or 2,500 point increments with Chase at least, but with Amazon, you can redeem you know with any amount of points, at least in my experience. Something I haven't mentioned yet, but is good to note is that this card does have a bunch of additional benefits on it, including an auto rental collision damage waiver, baggage delay insurance, lost luggage reimbursement, and all these other travel protections and purchase protections as well. After that, we're going to come to basically the Chase privacy disclosure. And it's going to tell you what they do with your personal information and all of that stuff. You are able to limit their sharing if you want to do that, which I wonder how many of y'all actually have done that. Maybe leave a comment down below because that's something I've never personally done, but I wonder how much it really does anything. Then we have the Prime Visa Rewards Program Agreement, which is going to be you know a little bit more of the fine print when it comes to this credit card, as you can tell. I have to zoom in so close here for y'all to even be able to read any of this, I feel like. But in reality, I would say this is not much more than a good Sunday read, depending on how bored you are. And then lastly, we have the card member agreement from Chase themselves. Since this is a Chase co-branded credit card, you of course need to have your card member agreement through Chase on top of the card member agreement, basically through Amazon as well. So once again, just a bunch of fun Sunday reading, but you know, something that we're not going to be covering here in this video. But now let's go ahead and dive into the part you've all been waiting for, the actual unboxing of this credit card. The first thing of note on this page though, is going to be that, as you can see, my mom was able to get a credit access line of $25,200. Why the $200 on there? Not exactly sure. But one cool thing about this is that whenever she was approved, she actually didn't have access, of course, to this full $25,000 until the card came in the mail. But in the meantime, she was able to actually use the card right away through Amazon with an initial credit limit. And I think that was in the three to $5,000 range. So not only do you get the gift card right away, but you can also use the credit card right away if you do get approved. Now, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and open up this card here in three, two, one. 
and there it is. See if I can get it to glisten a little bit in the light here. But as you can see, it's a very dark blue with some nice coloration in the middle of it, but on the outside, it's still very dark. Let me go ahead and pull this off the paper so we can look at it a little bit closer. All right, so as you can see here, very sleek and simple, minimal design here with just the Prime logo on the front, as well as the chip itself and the name along the bottom. Like I said before, the outside edges are a deep dark blue, but the inside is a little bit lighter whenever it's hit by the correct lighting, but nothing too crazy to cover here. Then the backside, they kept pretty minimal as well with just the Chase support number up here, the Amazon.com link to go ahead and access your card, the Visa signature logo on the bottom right, NFC logo here on the right, the Chase logo on the bottom left, again, because this is a Chase co-branded credit card. And then you're going to have the numbers right here across the front, including your expiration date and your security code as well. You know, personally, I do really like the Whole Foods design of this credit card. And this is, of course, the new and updated version of the Amazon Prime Visa. But y'all let me know down below which version y'all liked more. Do you like this blue normal version, the old gray normal version? the Whole Foods version or what have you. Also want to note that this card is a metal design in nature, but it is pretty flexible. And I guess metal design these days technically means that the inside of it is metal, but the outside is this plasticky design, but it does feel very premium, especially for a card that you're probably never gonna pull out of your wallet if you're somebody like me who just uses it on Amazon. But all in all, I would say it's a very nice, simple, clean design. And I think it's a card in general, again, that I think my mom's really gonna get a lot of value out of. And I hope that by the end of this, y'all watching can decide whether or not it's actually worth it for you as well. If y'all would like to see me unbox more of my credit cards, including all of these that I have in my wallet right here, then be sure to go ahead and click into this video next. And as always, I sincerely appreciate y'all watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time.